Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm happy to be joined today by Patrick Phillips, who is the author of a new book that we are releasing today as part of our ongoing uh, Kickstarter campaign. This is originally a Kickstarter campaign for uh, Clockwork Basilisk, a book about the Collier revolvers. And we came across your book kind of really on last minute short notice, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is Tobacco of the Emperor. Mm -hmm. What's it about? So it's kind of a collection of early 1900s Japanese tobacco all the way through till the end of the Second World War. Um, there's a lot of variation in Japanese cigarettes. There's a huge variety. The artwork is very interesting. And among Japanese collectors circles, uh, cigarettes tend to be pretty common. Okay. Um, but there is a huge variety out there, and a lot really isn't known about some of these brands. So it's kind of a collection of that, but it's also got pipes and ashtrays and other accessories. And the world's coolest lighter. That was <laughs> That's the single coolest thing in the book to me at this point. Yeah. So I have to say, like when, uh -huh. I, uh, when James and Nick at Headstamp, asked me about like they brought up this like mm -hmm. hey we have this opportunity to publish this what do you think my first thought is like tobacco really yeah and then i i read through the manuscript it's like, wow this yeah. is actually really cool there is a ton of fantastic artwork on the different like a huge number of different brands of mm -hmm. cigarettes and the artwork on them is really cool and yeah just the story and you managed to find period photographs, like mm -hmm. really interesting candid period photographs of yep. Japanese soldiers smoking on break. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Um, and that's definitely something that I, I looked very hard to get when writing the book, is I wanted to have a lot of good candid photographs because, you know, these are personal items and these yeah. are things that were enjoyed by the average Japanese soldier. You know, it's something that they would have looked forward to. They're things they would have gotten in care packages. And a lot of times it probably would have been the highlight of their day. And, you know, there's it's such an iconic... The, the Lucky Strike cigarettes mm -hmm. that Americans had in World War II are such an iconic thing. Yeah. That it kind of makes... Like, of course, why wouldn't every other country have a similar sort of effect? Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at a couple specific items. Like... Mm -hmm. I'm telling people this is a really interesting book, but I yeah. think we still have a lot of people out there going, I really like cigarettes. Yeah, Who sure. Possibly get? Okay, so let's let's pick like three different subjects to take a look at and mm -hmm. take a look at them up close. Perfect. All right, Patrick, a uh, couple specific things. What are we starting with here? So here, these are both Japanese military issue cigarettes. The one on the left is commercially manufactured that's the Brightness brand, or Hikari okay. in Japanese. And you can see the characters on the bottom. Yeah, these guys. Yep, those there. That actually says military use. So essentially for military use only. Okay. Um, they would have been a ration item. They would have been procured off the civilian market, and they would have been issued to Japanese soldiers. Okay. And that just opens up. Yep. And you got a foil wrapped. That looks like it's still sealed in there, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So now you said this sort of thing is actually fairly common. That, that kind of took me by surprise. Yeah, so the cigarettes, Japanese tobacco itself is not particularly rare among uh, collector circles. Um, some of these are, if they're military marked, those are pretty rare. Those okay. are kind of hard to come by. Okay. And this pack on the right, that's Hako brand. Now, that's just the brand name, but these are actually manufactured by the Japanese army themselves. Huh. So... Like most invading armies, when they take over a new territory, you take advantage of the existing infrastructure and existing factories and facilities. Okay. The Japanese were no different. And when they invaded the Philippines, they took over the large tobacco cultivation industry there. Hmm. And there was a Japanese unit that fell under the 14th Area Army that was called the 10682 unit. Okay. And they actually packaged tobacco for the military as a ration item. Huh. And that's what those are. Okay. And you can see what's interesting on this pack is yeah. the GI that brought this home actually wrote on there where he had been. Leite. And he marked yep. it right on the map. Yep. 
There's Leyte, New Caledonia, and I think there's San Francisco in the back. There we go. There's New Caledonia, and yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. huh. And it looks like, is that the original? Was it sealed that way? It's all original, and they're wow. still sealed. Huh. So have you actually smoked one of these? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we were talking about that off camera, and like, Possibly tuberculosis maybe is a good reason not to. So, okay. I had considered actually smoking one. I figured I'm writing a book on them. I got plenty. Um, should I smoke one? And I started looking into it. And I also consulted um, a friend of mine who's a physician. And since I don't really know where they came from, how they were stored, they could have all sorts of nasty things in them. Mold, funguses, and tuberculosis. Okay. And tuberculosis can stay dormant for years and years. And all it needs is a dark, warm, moist place like a human lung. So not recommended. To actually not smoke. recommended. Okay. Now you've got another pack over there mm -hmm. that's got something a little different on it. All right. So you've actually got two of these. Mm -hmm. uh, first off. Are these also army production? Are these commercial? What are we looking at here? No, these are both commercial Japanese cigarettes. These would have been available for purchase to Japanese soldiers and civilians. But you can see that they both have intelligence stamps on them. Yeah, so that's what that triangular thing is? That's exactly what that is. Now, it's common for if you find new enemy equipment or documents or something like that, that you would take those items to an intelligence officer. And yeah. that way you can gain any usable intelligence from them. And then whenever that item is, you know, released back to that service member, it'll get that stamp. And hmm. a lot of times the paperwork will get that stamp too. Oh, Basically saying that it's good to go and it can be released back to that service member. Okay. So it's interesting that these packs would have that stamp on there. And a lot of people wonder why. So the story goes with these is that it was rumored Japanese cigarettes had opium in them. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so these would have been found in the field. GIs would have picked these up. And U.S. Army intelligence actually took that issue uh, serious enough where they tested these for opium and other drugs just to see if huh. that was true. It turns out that they did not contain opium. Um, but there were brands that did. Okay. Well, I think that's a subject we should discuss in a little more depth later, but that stamp is, is really cool. It's very cool. And there's actually more in the book. These two both came from New Guinea. Okay. Um, yeah, I noticed Bay. they were, uh, yeah, they're marked here. Mm-hmm. Yep. So both of these came from the same place. They both have the same inspector stamp number, number 304. Oh, yeah. Yep. Huh. And that stamp says, examined in the field by joint intelligence. Neat. Yep. Okay, now, how about something a little fancier? Yeah. Do we have anything better than, you know, plain paper-wrapped cigarettes? We do. Cigarettes? I have the fanciest of the fancy. Okay, that does look pretty fancy. If I can hold it here so we get this, the, the light reflecting mm -hmm. off of that. What is this? So, this is what's referred to as Anshin no Tobacco or in Japanese, imperial gift tobacco. That certainly sounds fancy. Yes. Uh, it was customary for the royal family to give out gifts to visitors of the imperial palace and to imperial events. And they would include things like cigarettes, rock candy, sake. Um, and the cigarettes were very, very common. Um, originally, these came out with the gold foil that you see on them now. So that is actually gold foil Th that's gold foil the wow. characters are in gold foil those are little bonsai trees at the okay. bottom that are in gold foil and inside are 10 cigarettes that have the imperial 16 petal chrysanthemum on them and we oh, can no kidding okay, yeah i'll let you open that sure uh, actually before you do what do you uh -huh. know what these characters translate to imperial gift oh okay mm -hmm. that's simple and descriptive yep and so it is some Rather fine foil. Jazz and then we have jazz paper. Jazz. I know. <laughs> Ooh, those are in really good condition. Oh, wow. They all have the 16 petal chrysanthemum on them. Wow. And they are also really cool. in gold foil. Dang. Mm -hmm. Huh. 
And the way, there was a special way that you had to smoke these. Okay. You had to smoke them with the chrysanthemum facing towards the sky. Okay. Yes. Seems like a, a sign of respect. Yep. Dang. And you had to smoke the entire cigarette past the chrysanthemum. You couldn't <laughs> leave it halfway oh, smoked. Oh, it is not kosher to drop a, an imperial chrysanthemum on the ground and it, stomp on it, it, is it? It would not <laughs> be a good idea. Just say no. you're probably not going to get another pack of gift cigarettes. If that you would that. be frowned upon. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. These have got to be really rare. Or were they given away as they're, often enough that they're around? They, not really. Um, they were given away a lot during the war. And a lot of the time they were saved as souvenirs because, you okay. know, even to a Japanese soldier at that time, it would have just been a cool gift to hang on to. But many okay. times they were smoked. Um, so they sent these out also as morale items. Um, they would box them up in crates and they would send them to units stationed all throughout the empire and they would be distributed just like that as, you okay. know, part of comfort packages and morale items and things like that. Okay. Um, they're not particularly common. You can find them. Uh, more commonly, you find the empty boxes with the cigarettes mm -hmm. gone. Okay. That is super cool. Okay. So it's not really anything on the back. Yep. It's sparkly gold. Mm -hmm. And these were actually changed later in the 30s. So <laughs> by that time, the, the war in the Pacific and the war in China was using up a lot of important resources. And gold was one of those resources. It was a hmm. critical war material. And they actually wanted to save the gold. So they huh. did away with the gold leaf, and the characters eventually changed to just simple black ink. Huh. So what, what's the approximate date of this particular package? It's hard to say for sure. Uh, these are probably early 1930s. Okay. All right, so hopefully that's given you guys a, a little bit of a taste of, of what's in this book and why... I and James and Nick at Headstamp found it such an interesting subject, um, something we never really would have anticipated being so engaging and cool. So um, Tobacco of the Emperor is now available uh, on Kickstarter. We have added it to our existing Kickstarter. So if you go take a look, there's a link in the description text below, and you can pledge for a copy of Tobacco of the Emperor uh, by itself. Or if you've already uh, pledged for a copy of the Collier book, you can add this as an add-on extra. And we figured this was also a perfect uh, pairing with the book that we are in the process of printing on Japanese swords from the exact same period. Mm -hmm. So we put together a specific bundle of your book and our book on Japanese imperial swords and a bunch of exclusive cool extras, bookmarks, patches, that sort of stuff. So. You can also add that as a pledge on Kickstarter. Lots of cool options, and I'm really excited to be able to add this. I'm really glad that uh, that you are interested in talking to Headstamp about doing this. Absolutely, I'm I'm thrilled about it. It's the book was a lot of fun to write. It's been a really good time working with Headstamp, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm thrilled about it. I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. So, uh, available now on Kickstarter. Add something you never thought you'd be that interested in to your own bookshelf. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to do another one, I think, talking specifically about opium. Yes, so that's the subject that always comes up, but that's a subject for a separate video. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.